This week in lab, we'll be talking about thermochemistry, the heats of solution. In this lab, we're going to use a calorimeter to investigate the heat changes in chemical processes. Then we'll be able to calculate the heat changes based on that equation and relate the heat change to the enthalpy of the reaction. So this lab is based on the first law of thermodynamics, which says that energy is conserved. So the heat lost is equal to the negative value of the heat gained. Some terminology for this lab. An endothermic change means that the system absorbs energy from the surroundings, so the surroundings become colder. An exothermic change is the exact opposite, so the system releases energy and the surroundings become warmer. So if, you're, if the reaction is endothermic, and you touch the flask that it's happening in, for instance, it'll feel cold. And then for an exothermic reaction, the flask will feel really warm. So to calculate heat change, it's this equation, which is Q equals MC times delta T. Q equals the heat change, M is the mass of the material in grams, C is the specific heat, which is the energy required to raise one gram of the material one degree Celsius. For water, that value is 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. T is the temperature in Celsius, so the delta T in the equation is the change in temperature, so the final minus the initial temperature. So for this experiment, for the procedure, there are a couple parts. First, we're going to figure out the calorimeter constant by adding a sample of hot water to a sample of cold water and observing the heat change. So the goal of that part one is to calculate the calorimeter constant. For part two, we're going to figure out the heat of solution of a salt. So we're going to add a tenth of a mole of that salt to water and observe the heat change. And from there, we can figure out the enthalpy of the solution. So here's a breakdown of the calculations for this lab. In part one, remember that we're finding the calorimeter constant. So to do this, we need this equation, which is the heat change of the cold water, plus this equation, the calorimeter constant, multiplied by the change in temperature of the cold water and that equals the negative heat change of the hot water. So remember the heat change was that value Q and that equals MC delta T. So the M equals the mass, which we added a specific amount of water. So you can use the density of water, which is 0.997 grams per milliliter to figure out um, how much the water weighed in the calorimeter. Then the value of C is the specific heat of water, which is 4.18, and the change in temperature depends on if it was cold or hot water. So the final temperature is the same for both of them. That is when we added them both together. That's the final temperature. And the initial depends on um, the initial temperature of the cold and hot water before we mix them. So once we have all those values, we can calculate the calorimeter constant, C cal. So for part two, there's a few things we're going to calculate. First, we can figure out how many moles of salt we added. So we aimed for one-tenth of a mole, but it's never going to be perfect. So you want to figure out exactly how much you added. So that's just the mass divided by the molar mass, um, something we've done many times now. And then we can find the total heat change of the entire solution, which is the heat change of the solution and the heat change of the calorimeter added together. So for the heat change of the solution, that is the M times C times delta T equation. And for the calorimeter, that is C cal times delta T. So we just found the calorimeter constant and the change in temperature is the final minus initial temperature. Um, 
the mass of the solution is the mass of water plus the mass of salt, so you get that with the density of water again. And then the specific heat, you have to do that specific equation right there. Um, it's not going to be 4.18 because you added something else in now. So you have to do that equation with the weight percent of the salt to figure out the specific heat of your solution. So plug all that in and you can get the total heat change. Then finally we can find the enthalpy of solution, which is the heat change of the salt divided by the number of moles of salt. So the heat change of the salt is the negative value of the Q total that you just found in number two. And then N is the moles of salt that we found in number one. So I wanted to clarify also some things on the report sheet. First of all, if it says show your work, you should show your work. So be sure that you do that for questions number one and two that are below this list right here. Um, the next thing, this calorimeter constant, remember that's C cal that comes from the cold and hot water portion. And then all of the rest of this comes from the salt plus water portion, so part two. Um, it doesn't specifically say things like salt solution or anything, so I wanted to clarify that this is from the water plus water part and the top, and then everything else is from the salt water portion. And then remember the specific heat is just that C solution that you had to calculate on your own.